Hey guys, it's Vicki and today I'm here to talk about the books that I read in July. July ended up being a really good reading month for me. Uh, I read nine things, uh, but a couple of them were on the shorter side, uh, so that might have been why I reached nine. But I definitely just felt more productive this month. It was really nice because I know I was starting to feel a little bogged down uh, in like May and June. So yeah, I'm excited about the books that I did read. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so there were two books in July that I read that I'm not gonna review here because they are five star predictions. And I have um, a couple to finish up this month in August, and then I'm gonna be doing my wrap up for that. So the two that I read, but I'm gonna wrap up later this month are Goddess of Filth by V. Castro and The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. So yes, I read these in July, but I'm not gonna talk about them just yet. Uh, like I said, look for that video, hopefully by the end of August. So the first book that I completed in July was one I had started in June, and I was excited about it uh, because it is a retelling of one of my favorite classics, and that classic is Jane Eyre. And the book I am talking about is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. So like I said, this one is a retelling of Jane Eyre, but in this story, our main character, Jane Steele, is a serial killer. So that was kind of an interesting premise, really fun uh, and kind of dark and all that. And I think in the beginning of this book, I was really enjoying it, especially the parallels to Jane Eyre, uh, because it is a similar format. Um, you meet Jane Steele when she's a little girl and you kind of see her grow up just like in Jane Eyre um, and they just kind of have a similar trajectory in life. Uh, but And what was interesting about this too was that Jane Steele was aware of the novel Jane Eyre. Like it was a known thing in her world and so she often compared herself to Jane Eyre and all that stuff. Um, and so yeah, like I said at the beginning, I was enjoying this because I, I was enjoying the parallels because for me my favorite part of Jane Eyre is the early part when Jane is a little girl uh, and she kind of and I mean I like the I like the latter part too when she's a when she's an adult but I really liked the first part in this part in this book I liked that part too but then when she got to be an adult and kind of started going that way um, I really really lost interest in this I I don't know what happened I just by the end, when I, I probably had about 100 pages left, I just did not care anymore, but I was like, I've already read so much of this, I need to just finish it. And uh, yeah, I ended up not really liking it and not just not caring about the characters and all of it. So I was a little disappointed by this one, guys, unfortunately. Um, it was a two-star read. Uh, yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't my favorite. Then in July, I finished volume six of Saga, and so I can't say too much about the plot of this one, obviously, because it's the sixth volume, but this one was a lot of fun. It takes place, there was a little bit of a time jump, so a few years have passed um, since the last volume and the start of this one, uh, but that kind of time jump was done really well, very seamless, it was great. Uh, and yeah, this was a really enjoyable one. I really liked it. There's a cliffhanger in this one that just was like, what? Had me wanting to pick up volume seven right away. I had to really like control myself and not go pick it up right away because the, the cliffhanger at the end of this was awesome. <laughs> and so I cannot wait to pick up the next volume and find out what happens. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed this. This series is just really great. I yeah, can't recommend it enough. Um, this one, I think I gave it four stars. Uh, yeah, loved it. So my next July read was Of Women in Salt by Gabriela Garcia, and this is a short little lady, about 200 pages long, that tells the kind of two different stories that kind of intermingle. Um, the first story is about a woman named Jeanette who uh, one of her neighbors one night gets detained by ice and her daughter is sort of left behind and she kind of takes her daughter in to, and is kind of trying to figure out what to do, how to help her. Um, and then the other story is kind of about her neighbor and her daughter. Um, and so the stories kind of, they cross paths but are also their own thing. And it also kind of jumps in time. Uh, and kind of tells you stories um, about Jeanette's great-great-great-grandmother um, 
and things like that. So it is uh, a story that's full of a lot of rich characters um, and it does jump back and forth in time a lot. And that was probably my main gripe about this was the jumping back and forth was a little bit confusing at times. Uh, and you do meet a lot of characters that way, uh, which I didn't hate the characters. I thought the characters were pretty great, actually. I loved that all of them were women. Uh, so it's a very like female-centric story and all of that. Uh, but yeah, the time jumping was a little bit much. And then I, though I enjoyed both of the stories of Jeanette and her mother, Carmen, um, and also I can't remember the other um, characters' names, uh, but anyways, the other like mother-daughter pair that you hear about. Uh, for a 200-page book, it seemed like a lot of plot. I almost think maybe it should have just dealt with one or the other because the one especially didn't get a lot of page time and I kind of wanted more from that story. Uh, where if the book maybe had been longer or something, we might have gotten that, but because it was so short, not a lot of time was spent there. And I so it just felt like it was a lot for just a little book. So uh, the writing though was beautiful. I loved it. Like I said, I loved the characters. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. I will um, definitely read more from Gabriela Garcia. It's just I had a little bit of problem with the formatting, I guess, the format of the storytelling. So overall, I liked this. It was a three out of five. Next up, I read a crazy book, just a crazy book that I actually vlogged about. <laughs> because I knew it was going to be an experience. Um, I read Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca, and this is a novella. So it was a quick little read, and like I said, I vlogged about it, so I'm not going to go into details here. Um, I will link the vlog if you want to get my deep thoughts on this, but basically it's a quick little novella about these two women that meet online, and form this very uh, interesting, disturbing uh, relationship, and things just escalate and overall um, I liked this but there were also things I didn't like it was okay um, yeah I go on more about it in the vlog so if you want to check that out to get my deep thoughts they're all there and my reactions to some of the craziness that happened in this book uh, but yeah overall this was an okay read and I gave it three out of five stars next up I finished my read through of the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis by completing The Last Battle. And this one uh, is basically about, it's the last story about Narnia and how Narnia um, comes to an end. And I, what I liked about this one was you get to revisit a lot of characters from the series in this book, uh, especially one of my favorite characters from the series, Reapy Cheap which made me happy to see him again. Um, and so it was kind of fun to kind of, as everything's wrapping up, you're seeing all these other characters that you have met along the way. And I liked that. But there were, in all, all of the Narnia books are biblical in a sense. They have a lot of symbolism and parallels to, to the Bible, to Christianity. And in the other books, it was sort of, you could sort of overlook it sometimes uh, and just enjoy the story for what it was. But in this, it was kind of impossible to ignore the biblical parallels. And so it was a little bit like hitting me over the head with it. And I was kind of like, okay, uh, okay, I get it, you know? Um, and then like the way the book ended, the way the series ended, <laughs> I was so bummed out. I was just like, why did it have to end like that? And then there was one particular character that was handled a certain way in this that I just did not agree with. I didn't like it. And it also kind of bummed me out. So, so this one was okay. Um, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was just kind of okay, which is a little bit underwhelming for being the end of a seven book series. I wanted something a lot more, wow. So, eh. It is what it is. Uh, I gave this one three stars. So next up I listened to an audiobook that I put on hold at the library and did not think it was going to come through as quickly as it did. So I was very surprised. Uh, but I'm happy that I got this book when I did because it's a great summer read for sure. And that book is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It's her latest release. I have enjoyed, I've only read two Taylor Jenkins Reid's 
Taylor Jenkins Reid books uh, in the past, and both of them were five stars. So. I definitely wanted to check this one out. So I put I put the audiobook on hold at the library and it came through so fast. And so that was very pleasant. And I'm glad it did, like I said, because it is a good summer read because it takes place in Malibu. So you get that kind of beachy, just kind of California vibe. Uh, it takes place in the 80s, but also kind of goes back in time. It goes back all the way to the 50s. Uh, so it was just a really good book for summertime just to get that out of the way. Um, but the story is basically about this family. Um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting what their last name is. Is it like Riva, Riva? I think it was Riva. Yeah, I think it's Riva. And it's these four siblings that are the children of this like famous musician, um, but he hasn't really been in their lives very much. And every year the kids have this, the oldest daughter has this big party at her house um, because she is a, famous like model in surfer so she has this like big party on all these people like from Malibu and the like surrounding area come and so in the present day which is in like the 80s you're getting like you're building up to this party that's happening in the evening so it starts in the morning it's like a 24 hour kind of story um, so the book starts in that that morning and takes you through all the way to the party but but also interspersed between like the present day story you get the story of the Riva's uh, parents how their parents met and got together and how they were all born and grew up and stuff and I absolutely loved that part of the book I was just so engrossing even though like it wasn't anything like crazy uh, there was obviously some drama, some family drama, but it just, again, like Taylor Jenkins Reid just has a way of just like drawing me in with these characters. I was so invested. I was like finding ways to like find things to do where I'd have to listen to my audiobook because I just, I didn't want to stop listening to it. It was really, it was really good. But then it kind of got to the later part of the book where you're more in the present day and it's more about the party and some stuff that happens at the party between like the siblings and stuff, um, some dramas. And, but it's also um, a lot about like the famous people of the time or also came to this party. So a lot of like celebrities from that time are there and like all this stuff is going on, this crazy party's happening. And that part I didn't like as much. Like I didn't hate it, but compared to the early part of the story where you're really meeting this family and uh, all of that, it was just, it was almost like two different story like two completely different stories and so otherwise though I thought it was a very enjoyable read I really I really loved it uh, the audiobook I thought it was very good but just like I said that latter part was uh was just kind of I don't know I just didn't connect with it and the ending wasn't as like climactic as I was expecting uh some of the revelations and stuff made weren't like super like oh my gosh so but otherwise it was really good I definitely would recommend it and I gave it four stars and then the last book that I completed in July that I can kind of talk about in this video but not really because I also already did a standalone review of this book is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix so this was an anticipated read for me I love Grady Hendrix's books um, the ones that I've read I have really enjoyed and so this was a highly anticipated read and so because it was such an anticipated book, I went ahead and did a standalone book review of it. So I'm not going to repeat myself here. Um, other than that, it's a book about, uh, basically about final girls who are the girls that always are kind of at the end of horror movies that have survived the experience. Uh, they have beat the bad guy or whatnot. Um, and the story centers around a group of them who are slowly being taken out by somebody. So if you like slasher movies in any way, I think you would like this. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, if you want my further thoughts, my deep thoughts on it, go check out the standalone book review. Uh, but yeah, I liked this a lot and I gave it four out of five stars. All right, guys, so those are all the books that I read in July. Like I said, it was a pretty good reading month. I think that I got a lot read because uh, quite a few of these were on the shorter side. Um, and even Jane Steele, um, it was a carryover from June, so I only had about 100 or 150 pages left at the start of the month. So yeah, I feel like so accomplished though that I actually like got some books read this month. And I, for the most part, enjoyed uh, all of them. So that's great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, 
let me know down below what you read in July because I would love to hear what everybody has been reading and yeah that's it so I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I will talk with you soon thank you so much for watching bye